live from Liverpool. We need to talk about ghosts with Kevin Eustace. Yes, it is. It's time. It's Sunday. It's time for the Sunday sermon with me, your priest in the paranormal. I'm not calling myself that anymore. Anyway, how are you all? As all podcasters like to ask, how are you all? I hope that you're all okay. Um... I am okay too. Thank you for asking back. Not that I'm sure you did. But anyway, we've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. No interviews today. We're reverting to your listener stories, which you've all gratefully sent in. Thank you very much. And don't forget, if you've got a scary story that you want to send in on to show for me to read, send it in to contact at talkaboutghosts.com. Now, unless you've been under a rock... For the, that was loud, wasn't it? Unless you've been under a rock for the last uh, few weeks, you will know it is the Euros, which is basically a soccer tournament in Europe, obviously, um, where we all compete to get a little tiny trophy once every four years. And England today, this very day, are in the final against Italy. And it's the first time in 55 years that England could lift a trophy. Yes, it is a competitive trophy. And um, I'm not asked if I'm being perfectly honest. Yep, couldn't give a toss. It's not that I don't want England to win. I'm, you know, win away, lads. Win away. Um, I win away, I win away, I win away. Anyway, but I just couldn't care less. I genuinely couldn't care less. So if they win or lose, I'm not arsed. But for all my friends who do support England in the football team um, world, then I hope they win, yes. But if you're Italian, I hope you win too. Not that they can both win. So, yeah, that's exciting. If you're a football fan, which I am not, but in other news, albeit very similar news, Becca is a football fan. So, she is going out. She doesn't yet know where. She's going to call some of her friends to go and watch the football. She's bought a white dress, which she wants me to attach a red ribbon to so that it forms the um, the St. George's Cross. Yes. She won't stand out like a sore thumb. Mind you, she probably won't because everyone acts like a lunatic when the football's on. Like they paint flags on the cheeks and they go, England, England. It's a Sunday. You're all in work in the morning. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Anyway, I jest. Shall we talk about ghosts? Yes, we shall. Well, on the Patreon episode that we're going to do shortly after this, we're going to look at um, the Haunted Tour of Britain Merseyside edition. Yes, it's a book by Richard Felix. If you don't know who Richard Felix is, he used to be on Most Haunted. Um, the thing that's got like Aveth Fielding and Derek Akora where they go around and go, can you copy me? And then you yeah. And they go, bloody hell, uh, that program. And Richard Felix is the one who looks, hmm, how would you describe him? He looks like the sort of guy who would ask you to break a fiver in a car park so that he can pay the, the um, parking machine. That's the best way I could describe him. Or a very confused carpenter. Anyway, so it's a book by him we'll be looking at on Patreon today. And of course, Patreon is why you're listening now. This is the free feed, and I only get to do this because people subscribe to Patreon. So if you wish to support the show to keep this going, then you can subscribe to Patreon. And if you subscribe to Patreon, you get two extra episodes each and every week. Yeah, some places just say one a month. No, no, not here. Eight a month. Yes, there's already hundreds of back episodes on the Patreon, just Patreon specials. And you need to go to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And some people have already done that this week. And I'd just like to say thank you via the medium, of course, of song. The guitar is well and truly out, and this week we have some wonderful people to say thank you to. We have Molly Burns, Jackie, Vicky Gus, Margaret Jo McIsaac, Emily Thomas, Arthur Graham, and Mitchell Bischop. And this song is for you guys. Yeah, feel it, baby. E. Molly Burns, Jackie, Vicky Gus. And Margaret Joan McIsaac Emily Thomas Arthur Graham Not to forget Mitchell Bishop Thank you for keeping the lights on And helping the show stay afloat Yeah From the back of my throat To the top of my heart Thank you 
ended it on a seventh. And what the hell does the back of my throat, top of my heart mean? Don't know. You just ad-lib these things when you write songs for patrons. That's what I find. But anyway, thank you, you wonderful people. And don't forget, if you want to help the show, and it literally does make this what you're hearing now, go into your ear holes. Go to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Now, it's been a while. Shall we have some weakness in weirdness? I think we shall. We can weird. Yes, it's that time again where we look at everything weird and wonderful that's happened in the last seven days. And this one comes in from our regular contributor and I need to say a big massive shout out and thank you to the wonderful Lucy White who literally week on week sends us little snippets and says would you consider this for Weekend Weird that timed very well didn't it so anyway this one is from Somerset Live and it's an abandoned Southwest railway line where people claim to have seen a ghost train choo choo boo boo Plymouth this is the article now Plymouth is home to many old and abandoned train lines and railway-related artefacts. Interesting. Some have been removed and some now serve as pleasant cycle paths. Well, that's a bit dull. One that cuts through the heart of the city is widely to believed to be abandoned, but in fact still operates to this day. Reports came into Plymouth Live last week that an old train was going alongside Tothill Park on the abandoned rails, described as a ghost train with approximately 20 oil carriages by a local man. It came as quite a surprise to residents in the area who long believed this stretch of track is abandoned. So there we go, short and sweet from Somerset Live, a ghost train possibly, or is it a normal train that just doesn't do it very often? I don't know. What do you think about ghost vehicles? I tell you what I do believe. I believe ghost planes, because in like um, the Peak District and stuff like that, there's lots of sightings of ghost planes from World War One and Two, where they've crashed into the moors and stuff. And I like all that sort of stuff. I mean, I don't like people dying in plane crashes. I like ghosts. Hence the podcast. Reverse out of this conversation, Kevin, very quickly. Anyway, that's been this week's Week in Weird. Week in Weird. So, here we are, the spook section, finally. Shall we jump right in? Yes, I think we shall. Our first email here is from our Patreon, Patrick Marshall, and he writes, Hello, Kevin. Hello, Patrick. Read this out loud if you want. I will. Thank you for the offer. Sorry for the empty email. He sent me an email prior, which had no attachments, you see. Gotta love technology and how it still has glitches even in today's age. I completely agree. I apologise it's taken me a year to send another haunted story from the El Paso Playhouse. Don't apologise at all, sir. But between the world being on fire, correct, a death, oh dear, sorry, and now employed once again, hooray, listening to your podcast between We Need to Talk About Ghosts and the Dark Paranormal has kept me going. Ah, well I'm glad to hear so, sir. Shall we begin? Yes, we shall. This is Patrick's story. Here, we have another haunted story from the El Paso Playhouse. It was a late night and we just finished auditions for an upcoming show. There were only three of us left in the theatre at the time. We were discussing which people we would like to cast in which roles. Suddenly, we heard a rustling sound, the same sound paper makes when wind catches it. We all looked up at each other, couldn't help but wonder if someone else had entered the building. So we, with slight hesitation since no one came around here to where we were, started to investigate to see if anyone had entered the building. I made it to where the box office was and didn't see anyone. That's when I had the urge to look into the auditorium. What I saw was this. Something just floating across the stage. No head, no arms. Just a torso, bright, moving across the stage. The stage is hollow, so when you walk you will hear footsteps. There was zero sound to this. It's about that time when I knew we had to leave. I turned and saw that another person who was there saw the exact same thing I did. Turned off the lights and locked the office. We met the other two by the side door and made sure we had everything and left through the door. Just on the off chance with a slight maybe and great hesitation. We all decided to walk to the front of the building since it had glass windows and doors. Maybe, just maybe, it was a person. 
No, no, it wasn't. The atmosphere changed to very unwelcoming and tense. Whatever was in there was just standing in the aisle, staring back at us. We left promptly, returning the next day to find pictures tossed off walls and chairs thrown around. Sorry it was so long, but we'll return with another story later on. Regards to you and Becca, Patrick. Well, well, Patrick, I'll have two tickets to the haunted auditorium, please. That's terrifying. So when you say, I wonder when you say, a torso, no arms, no legs. Obviously then, no head, because otherwise you would have mentioned it. So was that what it was? Was it like if you pull the legs and arms off uh, a He-Man figure and it was just like torso He-Man floating across the stage going, I'm going to use my invisible arms to throw stuff around here when you're gone. You mark my He-Man words. That is terrifying, Patrick. I mock, but I mock in jest because that is bloody terrifying. And I would have ran a country mile. Um, Thank you, Patrick. And by all means, as soon as you get the means to, can you please send us more stories from the haunted hotel? It's not a hotel, is it? From the haunted theatre in El Paso. Um, Okay. Very good. Thank you, Patrick. Let's have another. So next, in our little email treasure trove of paranormal, we have an email, or should I say a plethora of little stories from somebody who wishes to remain anonymous. That's right. It's Annie. Anonymous. Anyway, it's anonymous all the way from California. And they write, I would like to remain anonymous. There you go. I told you so, didn't I? Hello, Kevin. Hi, Becca. Becca, you, you're here. You can shout hi. Hi. She's a bit hungover. And the neighbor's cat. Wink, wink. What do you mean, wink, wink? It is the neighbor's cat. Meow. I started listening to your podcast during lockdown. And when you announced you were starting the Dark Paranormal, I started listening to that as well. Anyway, I'm a huge fan, so thought I would share a few of my experiences with you. So this is Anne-Marie from Los Angeles' email. <gasps> she said anonymous. Oh, shit. I'm joking. That's not a real name. It could even be a boy. Anyway, this is their email. In the late 90s, my husband was stationed in Southern California. We were a very young couple with two very young boys. We had a very small but comfortable two-bedroom apartment off base in a not-so-great area. But again, it was a comfortable little place and we had great neighbours who were either friendly or kept themselves to themselves. Needless to say, our support system was limited. Hubby would sometimes work long hours, 12 on, 12 off, nights, weekends and many deployments ranging from a few weeks to six to seven months. I always had a hard time sleeping when hubby worked nights or was deployed, so I would do some of the household cleaning after the boys were asleep to keep me busy. One such night, I was in the kitchen washing dishes and decided to pour myself a drink. As I was reaching into the fridge, I felt a gentle but very firm adult-sized hand on my shoulder. I froze. As the realisation that I was the only adult home and my sons were much too small to reach my shoulder, I slowly turned my head to look over my shoulder. No one was there. The boys were sound asleep in their beds. The door was locked and I was completely alone in the kitchen. As alarming as that was, I had a sense of peace, as if someone was trying to comfort me. Sometime later, it was time for Hubby to deploy for six months. Deployments were the worst and I don't miss the emotional roller coaster leading up to his departure and during his absence. After weeks of feverishly getting all our affairs in order, making sure he had all his gear and packing everything up, the night before he was scheduled to leave arrived and we were finally in bed. He has always been the type to be asleep before his head hits the pillow. Not me. After some tossing and turning, I remember rolling over in bed when I felt a very gentle but firm adult-sized hand on my shoulder. Just as before, I was alarmed at first but had a sense of peace and comfort, so I placed my hand where I was still able to feel the invisible hand and fell asleep. My final account from this little apartment happened not long before we moved across the country. It was a Sunday night. The boys were in bed and Hubby and I were folding laundry on our bed. We were either side of the bed. I had a view of the door forward and right of me. Hubby could see the door to his left from his periphery. The boy's bedroom door was next to ours. As we were folding clothes and chatting, 
From the shadows of the doorway, we see a dark little head peek around the corner. Corner of the eye phenomena. We continued folding laundry and ignored them. But I said to Hubby something along the lines of, Those boogers better get back to sleep. A few minutes later, from the shadows, we see a dark little head peek around the door. That's when I started to get frustrated. I was in no mood for shenanigans. I kept my eyes focused on my work and I said to Hubby, they better not peek in here again. So we continued folding every piece of laundry in the house. Then, once more, a dark little head peeked around the door. Hubby turned to look as I kept focus on my work and firmly said, go to bed. I looked up at Hubby just as he turned his head back to look at me. His eyes and mouth were wide open, wider than I've ever seen. He said to me, that wasn't the boys. I don't know what I saw that night. I don't know any history of the previous residents, but I never saw or felt anything after that. Thank you for your time and your dedication to the podcasts. Until next time, Anony Mouse. Why, thank you, Annie Oni Mouse. What a wonderful story. That's bloody terrifying. Although it does seem slightly comforting. I mean, don't get me wrong, not the dark shadows peeking around the corner and looking like they're going to kill you, in my mind, when I'm thinking about it anyway. But um, it does seem like it's a reassuring thing. If you are able to fall asleep with a ghostly hand on your shoulder, then you're made of sterner stuff than I. For if right now, as I sit recording this, even a gentle adult hand was placed on my shoulder, I wouldn't go, and hands that do dishes can, and like embrace it. I'd be like, mother, and crash through the wall. There would be a kev-shaped hole, let me put it that way. And of course, a duo of priests would be on call. But seriously, Anonymous, that is terrifying. And I can only assume from how you describe that story that your husband's a soldier or something similar. So well done him too, going to fight the good fight. So thank you all round. But that is truly and utterly terrifying. So we are going to have some more stories. Um, just as a quick little addendum. No, that's not right, is it? Addendum? Becca, how do you say that word? Addendum. Addendum. Thank you. As a quick little addendum, um, I recorded the start of this, to, just for full disclosure. Then we went out for breakfast, and then I come back and recorded the rest of it. But when we went out for breakfast, or brunch, if you will, we um, went to this little market, which is just by where the brunch part is. And I went in and had my tarot cards read. Yes, I did. 20 English pounds was spent. Um, I won't go into it. I'll probably go into it more on the Patreon. But I will say this. How funny is this when you have a tarot card reason with re- reading with someone that you've spent 20 pounds for and they tell you you need to be more careful with your money? It's like, really? Tell me more. Tell me more. Like, do I have more grit on my head? Aha. Aha. Um, that's a Greece reference there. But yeah, so it was a bit of a shock really, to be told you're stupid with money by someone you've just paid to um, turn over cards and tell you your future. Hmm. Anyone could kind of guess that. So, anyway, let's have more spooky stories, shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay, so next, and it's a rarity we get them these days, but we do have an animal ghost story. Yes, we do. And this came in from Katie, and she writes, Hi, Kev. Hi. Hi, Becca. Becca. Someone said hi. Very hungover. And the neighbours... Ca- you are. Alone. Just You know what? I'm not. Just leave me alone. I, not, I'm over here minding my own business. You are minding your own business. But when someone says hi, you can't be rude. And what would you do if I wasn't here? Um, I'd, I'd pretend that you... I'd do your voice. Do you want me to do your voice? Yeah. Would you sooner me do that? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Kev. Hi. Hi, Becca. All right. And the neighbour's cat. Meow. Was that better? Much better, yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll do that then. I've been a huge fan of your podcast since it started, and I always re-listen to your episodes. Oh, thank you. And The Dark Paranormal, when I have no new content. (laughs) Oh, no, I've read that wrong. That's not how she meant it. Anyway, I do the same with real-life ghost stories, which I'm re-listening to from the beginning after the sad news that Dan passed away. And um, I would suggest everyone does that, because it's such amazing stories and content. So all go and do that. Stop listening to this and go and do that. Uh, And if you've come back, hello! I hope you enjoyed all of them. They were brilliant, wasn't they? So, she continues, there are several episodes that mention ghost animals and it's prompted me to write in with this short but hopefully sweet story. Well, Katie, let's have it. 
For years, I had a little black and white cat called Dexter. He was very laid back and loved nothing more than lazing around anywhere where it was warm and cosy. He had a great little personality and was very loving. Having said that, he was very territorial and would dive out of the cat flap for a dust-up with other local cats if he so much as caught a glimpse of them near his turf. In May 2018, he was chasing another cat and got knocked over on the main road just up from my house. Oh, bloody hell. He was killed instantly and I was absolutely devastated. My marriage was breaking up at the time and it had been decided that he would come and live with me as he was such a mummy's boy. I think because of everything else that was going on at the time, it was another great sense of loss in an already awful period of my life. Although looking back, I think I much preferred the cat to my ex-husband anyway. A couple of nights after this happened, I went to bed and drifted off as normal. I slipped into a deep sleep and began to dream about a warm summer's day sat out in my back garden. I had one of those old cable barrels which had been upcycled into an outside table with beer barrels converted into stools, so it stood quite high up off the ground. Dexter was sat on top of the table basking in the sunshine. I was smiling at him and calling him over so I could have one last cuddle, even though this was a dream and I knew he was no longer with us. Dexter got to his feet and was poised to jump down from the table. As he jumped and was at the point of landing, I felt a sharp, sudden thud onto my back that woke me up sharply from my deep sleep and made me sit bolt upright in bed. After the adrenaline and sudden shock wore off, I put this down to grief and how much upset and negative energy was in the house at the time. I'd continue with that thought if I hadn't had the same dream with the exact same thing happening the night after. Is Dexter trying to let me know he was still with me, or was my emotionally fragile mind giving him back to me for a brief time? I don't know. On a few occasions since, I have seen a little round indentation in the middle of the bed, which is where he would sleep if the doors were left open to the bedrooms. Maybe he is still lazing around the house, conserving his energy to chase off other moggies. Well, you know what, Kate, I think that Your little cat is still around looking after you. And I think he's coming back in your dreams to say, it's okay, I'm okay too. Don't you worry about me. And, um, you know, I've said on earlier episodes, ah, I don't really like animal ghost stories. Give me the devils that rip you in half any day of the week. But then since the neighbour got their cat, um, they seem to touch a different chord with me. Let me just put it that way. And uh, if anything happened to the neighbour's cat, I'd want it to still be walking around. I wouldn't want to still have to buy food because that would be a pointless expense. But you know what I mean. I'd want it to still be going, hello, and biting me and stuff like that. So thank you, Katie, for that. And she does continue with her email where she says, I'm going to East Drive in to stay overnight in September. So if I ever run in with the Black Monk of Pontefract or any other scary being, I will let you know. Love the podcast and what you bring to the paranormal podcasting community. Keep the ramblings at the beginning. They make me chuckle and are an integral part of the show. Katie there, backing up the sentiment of everyone who's got in touch, really. No one's got in touch and said, stop rambling, you knob, which is nice. Because, um, you know, one, I like rambling, and two, I'd hate to be called a knob. But, um, Katie, thank you for your email. And good luck in East Drive, of course. 30 East Drive, yes. The Black Monk of Pontefract. I think we've covered it in a previous show. I, I haven't yet covered it on The Dark Paranormal. I don't think. Maybe I'll do that in season four. Yes, I will. But uh, it's an intriguing case, and maybe we'll all go there one day, yes. Maybe we'll do a special from 30 East Drive when it's not like 500 quid a night because they're milking it. But we will see. But sincerely, thank you, Katie, for that email. Anyway, let's have some more. Now, as you all know, I don't pre-read these emails. I just have a quick scan through and go, that's about ghosts, I flag it. That's about ghosts, I flag it. That's feedback, blah, blah, blah. Then when I get to do the show, I go to the ones I flagged that I've got ghosts in, and I read them out live as as live on the show so you get my true reaction anyway you guys like i have no doubt ran the gamut of paranormal podcasts out there and we'll all know jim harrell's campfire some of you guys will have probably got found my show through jim harrell's campfire when i was on it way back in like 2019 um but do you know the way jim harrell often says about the synchronicities of stories in the show where he says, I often find... That was quite a good Jim Harrell, wasn't it? I'll do that again. I often find that when I'm doing the stories, they come together and they have a theme or a general spread. And wait there, because he says it, I'll say, wow, that's a doozy. Huh, a head scratcher. Anyway, that was my Jim Harrell impression. 
it was average. But I've always thought, yeah, that's interesting, Jim. But do you just kind of manipulate that so that's the case? However, as luck would have it, the next story that I flagged that I come to is an animal ghost story. Ha, huh, so maybe there is a theme. That wasn't, that's like some evil doctor than Jim Harold. Let me try again. Okay, our next email. Oh no, I can't do it. He's just a lovely guy. Anyway, the next one is another animal ghost. How interesting. This is from Alison. And it says, hi, Kevin. Hi. Okay, so here's my not so spooky installment. Our beloved Border Collie Mix passed away on May the 5th. She was 14 and a half to the, years old to the day. Oh, I'd been thinking for a couple of weeks prior to this sad event, Kylie, just please get to 14 and a half and we can review the situation. On the night before she died, she made it clear to us she was ready to check out. We helped her along the next morning with a lovely at-home euthanasia service and a wonderful veterinarian. My husband and I and my kids were all there petting her. It was peaceful and nobody could ask for a better send-off. I miss her terribly. When I think of all the miles we walked for so many years, my eyes well up instantly. And I'm choking up as I say it. This is two on the bounce. I don't know. Anyway, I got four signals from Kylie. About a week after she passed, I went into our bedroom and smelled poop. A strange sign, you say? Yes, I, yes, I do, actually, Alison. Um, yes, but she had some fecal incontinence due to a neurological problem for about a year. The thing is, she didn't go into our bedroom at all. This happened to me twice in the bedroom and once when I entered the laundry room. Another room she didn't go into. I have heard people say our animals in the great beyond try to communicate with us through scent. Generally, a scent we associate with them right away. Alas, poop is a common one. Well, it's, you know, it's kind of funny for her is, but it's also very, very cute. The next event was more startling. I was sitting on the couch watching television with my husband a month after she died. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a movement. I turned for about three or four seconds and saw a black smoky thing moving towards Kaylee's bed. After it dissipated, I said to my husband, Patrick, was that a mouse? He had not seen it, but he got up and looked. He found nothing. It would have had nowhere to go because Kaylee's bed was up against a bookcase. I knew it wasn't a mouse. It was my K-girl, no doubt. I'm just sad my husband missed it. What's really interesting here is the black smoke-like entity is exactly like what I used to see in our old apartment, although this was smaller and lower to the ground than what I used to see there. Perhaps this is my typical way of seeing apparitions, in brackets, except for the time I saw the full-bodied apparition. What do you think? I have another brief story for you, but I will check in with that later. Give Sienna a pat on the head for me and say hello to Becca. Best, Alison. I will. When the neighbours let her next out, I will pat that cat on the head. Um, Alison, definitely think that was your, your dog. I really do. 14 and a half? Christ, what is that in dog years? So they reckon seven years, don't they? So 70 automatically. Then four times seven. Was that 28? So 98 and a half. Well, no, the half is uh, then three and a half years. 101 years old. Crikey O'Reilly. And then she's coming back and, and giving you those lovely smells. Um, but I do think it was your dog coming back to let you know she was all right. And I do think that's what you've seen, that is being the black smoke going towards the bed. And it's an interesting premise what you say there. Is that how you see spirits? Black smoke. I've recently read a story about black smoke, about seeing black smoke. I don't know whether it was on this show, it was on the Dark Paranormal, or I've read it somewhere. But i tell you what I did see as well, um, which ties in with what you're talking about here. There's a really, really eerie video on YouTube. Couldn't tell you where, where, how to find it. But what I will say is, you know, I've been talking about these Nukes Top 5 channels where there's a collation of spooky videos. So the ones I watch are Nukes Top 5, Bizarre Bub, um, what was the other one? Frostmare. And I think that's the only three I watch, actually. Frostmare. Yeah. Um, thanks, Matt, uh, from uh, Matt Toppin there from, oh, is what's his new podcast called? Royal Philharmonic Chainsaw Massacre, I think. Check that out when it's out. Anyway, but uh, yeah, he's dropped me some of them as well. But when, if you go through some of them, in one of them in particular, there's like this man and woman in somewhere in South America and he's filming her and she's shouting at the corner of this, like outside of a building. And from this corner, 
there's a black smoke like coming out and then being sucked back in. And then like she's trying to kick at it and says it's an evil entity. But it, this black smoke, I think, is it's not necessarily a trope, but I think it's going to be the new trend um, in what people see now. So we've had Shadow Man, Hat Man. I think spirits in 2021, the fashion for spirits now is to be seen as smoke. That's not me um, saying that what you see in there is fake, because obviously it's not. You're just telling me this for the first time. I'm just saying personally, I'm noticing a lot of stories involving black smoke. So let's see if this follows through, if my prediction is right, if over the next 12 months, we're going to start seeing ghosts as black smoke. You never know. You might. You just might. But sincerely, Alison, thank you very much for getting in touch. And thank you, all of our submitters, for getting in touch. In touch. In touch. Don't forget, if you've got a story and you want to send it in, send it in to contact at talkaboutghosts.com. I will, of course, read it out, for that's the point of the show. If you'd like to support the show and keep it going on this feed, you will also get two extra shows each and every week. Then sign up to our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And today we're going on the Haunted Tour of Britain Merseyside edition with a man who looks like he needs change for a cash machine. I mean, for a parking machine in a supermarket. Or, as I said earlier, a very confused carpenter. Mr. Richard Felix. Uh, he's not going to be on the show, obviously. He wrote the book. So, I don't think there's anything else to say. So, yeah, I'll let you all go. So, as Jeremy Springer said back in the 90s, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Jerry Springer. You probably said that as well. Okay, guys, take care. I love you all. Daddy, bye.